Hi Virgo, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for September, which is your month, isn't it Virgo? So it's birthday time, which is great. Um, you're going to see a lot of activity in your sign this month, and that should really give you a lot of energy and excitement. Julie is going to be talking about that. And, uh, and then also we've got some great stuff for you in your house of money coming up later in the month when these planets move into Libra. Um, Julia, what have you got for us about Mercury activity for Virgo? Oh, nice. Well, Virgo, hi. Um, really good news for you this month because the planet which rules your ascendant, Mercury, is going to be in your first house of self for the first half of the month. Um, and this planet, Mercury, is going to be really, really supercharged as well um, because it loves being in the sign of Virgo, and it's going to have a Greater Epiphany Day on the 2nd. And Greater Epiphany Day is a time when Mercury is moving really, really fast in the sky. Um, you know how during Mercury retrogrades, because Mercury is your ruling planet, um, they may sort of trip you up a little bit more than actually everybody else. But during this month, at least for the first half, um, you're going to be flowing really Really, really well and with mercury in the first house which is the south house of self you might be able to almost like self-actualize uh express yourself much better than usual mm -hmm. and if you need to sort of think of ahead about any ways in which you need to even express yourself further this is a really great time for it and then mercury is going to be moving into your second house after the 14th that's the house of security and finances. So that'll be a really good time period for any type of strategy or sort of thought into the future of how you want to actually organize your finances better. Natha, what are you seeing with Venus and Mars this month? Yeah, so, hi. Um, with Venus, Venus is going to start off in your first house. So this is going to be a really good month, especially at the beginning, to really show off your intelligence show off your ability to get things done and you know you are so detail oriented and it's really one of your skills and gifts so this is a great month to really show people that part of yourself and and also you know um do things that enhance all of your inner beauty because the first house is how we are seen in the world as venus moves into the second house that's going to be into the sign of libra use some of that Libra support to apply some balances to your finances. Really kind of keep, look, look for what needs to be put into check and then do that, do that for yourself. And Mars is going to be in the sign of Virgo all month. So Mars is gonna be in your first house. And similar to what Julia just told us about with the greater Epiphany Day with Mercury, we have a heroic Epiphany Day that is happening on September 3rd. And that is because the planet Mars is coming into conjunction with the sun. So when this day happens, it's a really auspicious day to take action. So, you know, take action on your self-presentation is a very simplified way to look at it. You might want to get a haircut. Or if you have something new that you're trying to launch out into the world, perhaps a business project or um, really anything where you're ready to say, all right, world, here it is. Tell me what you think. Uh, September 3rd is going to be a really good day to do that. You'll have a lot of extra, um, I guess we could say luck, but, but also support. And Jamie has a lot more about moons and, and other stuff. Jamie? Yeah, I do. There's a wonderful harvest moon coming this month. And uh, the harvest moon is the full moon that happens during Virgo. Sun will be in Virgo over here with Mars in your first house, giving you a lot of energy, vitality, assertion, um, and, and drive to do your organizing thing that you do so well, Virgo. And over opposite to it, we've got Neptune and the moon in your seventh house, bringing a wonderful softening and a mood of compassion in your relationships. And um, so don't project that all onto your partner and make your partner be the compassionate one. Just go ahead and snuggle up to that person and enjoy a wonderful oasis, a space of, of compassion and dream and imagination, um, and, and really take a load off around the 13th when that full moon is happening. Uh, I think the 12th, 13th, and 14th are really good days this month for a, a lull in the activity. A little bit later in the month, we have... Um, Another important event, which is that Saturn, which has been traveling retrograde for many months, 
uh, through your fifth house of creation, recreation, and procreation um, is going to be turning direct. And so if things in those areas have been kind of uh, slowed down or you've been experiencing obstacles and blocks in those areas um, in your connections with children or in creative pursuits or in just, you know, your sheer ability to have fun, Saturn is going to be easing off and, uh, and, and really sort of um, taking off the brakes uh, after, after the 18th. Then the next thing that happens is that uh, there's another thing that's been going on for quite some time uh, this year, and that is that Jupiter and Neptune have been traveling in a square. Jupiter through your fourth house in Sagittarius, and then Neptune in your seventh house. Now, Neptune's going to be in your seventh house as a long-term thing. Really, it's an era. As long as Neptune is in Pisces, it will be um, bringing you opportunities to redream your relationships, but also opportunities to fantasize, imagine, and basically project onto your partners and, uh, and try to shape and mold them into who you want them to be. And um, and so it's a little bit slippery in the relationship realm in general, and that's a part of the whole era, so it's kind of a long-term thing. But Jupiter's square to Neptune has brought um, an additional theme of home into that mix. So um, while Jupiter's passage through your fourth house this year has brought a tremendous expansion, and with it, probably a little bit of restlessness, too, at home and a desire to grow. Uh, the thing that you really have to watch out for with Jupiter square Neptune is participating in um, any delusions that your partner might have going. So if your partner has, um, has kind of gone off the deep end and you've been going along with that, uh, this transit might have something to do with why. And uh, after this transit is over, might be a time when, you know, everybody wakes up from the trance and wonders, what the hell have I been doing this year? So uh, the final pass of that is on September 21st. And by the time September is over, Jupiter will be leaving uh, that transit to Neptune quite thoroughly. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a little difficult, not in ways that are obvious, because Jupiter square Neptune feels good but not in a grounded way. So um, the last thing I want to let you know about is a new moon on September 28th, and that falls in the sign of Libra, which is your second house, as uh, we've already talked about. There are the moon together in Libra in your second, and we know that the second is the house of money. And so this could, you know, with Venus being there too, this could bring about some spending that, uh, you know, might not be thoroughly thought through. And um, you might feel like you are a little bit prone to getting spendy when it comes to um, high-end designer items. And so watch out for that and, and really keep it balanced. You know, stay measured in your approach to spending later on in the month. Um, yeah. Because Venus does love luxury, especially in her own sign, especially in the second house. So I think that's what we have for you this month, Virgo. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. And uh, we'll see you around the cosmos. Check in with your horoscope next month as well. Bye-bye, Virgo.